Anybody? Question. Yeah. yeah, so two years ago, the um, sanitary napkin distribution was done by the Ministry of Education. And so they would say they provide nine parts because that's the school for nine, for nine months, three months from, we have three terms in a year. So within the three terms, they're supposed to distribute nine packets per girl. But they end up distributing one packet per term. And in some schools, it never happens. So I'm not going to talk about where they disappear to, because I don't know. But essentially, the government should provide. But in most of the cases, and especially in these hard to reach places, it does not happen. So that's the challenge we are having. By the way, she mentioned uh, that you know, oftentimes these these products will sh you know, show up on the, on the back of a motorbike. My experience is I cannot think of anything that I haven't seen on the back of a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Patricia, I, uh, I don't have a question, but I'd like to comment on what you just asked about. Uh, my friends and I were privileged to go to Africa a couple of years ago after we made donations to Asante Africa and became involved in the project. And we got to see where our money was working at schools, and um, whether it be repaving the floor, putting in windows, providing lunches, or in one place, it was simply uh, a separate laboratory, which was really just an outhouse, but for young women. So when they you know, became of age and they started menstruating, they had privacy. And who of us ever thought would think about the fact that we can't go to school because we have no place to take care of our womanly needs. So things, the smallest things make the biggest difference. And um, because of my experiences with Sante and travels, um, I've opened my eyes to something that I never thought about before. And I applaud you all for what you're doing. Thank and you. Ms. Erna. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll take care of you and your three daughters. Um, and I heard how you ride a motorbike three hours to go to some village. I'm trying to connect the dots here. How does that work? <laughs> how do you how do you do that? So my daughters are not part of the motorbike. <laughs> But when you're going out to the field to a school, there's, there's a school that is at the border of Kenya and Tanzania, and there's no road access, there's no road network. So you go to a, you get to a small town, you get on a, you ride on a motorbike for three hours, and I did add that it was it was a rainy season, and at some point we had to carry the motorbike. <laughs> yes, like push it. <laughs> yeah, and we spent three days because it was raining. Yeah. But how do you take care of your girls at home? How do you balance the struggle between, you know, leading your staff and taking care of your family? I'm so glad I'm working with Asante Africa Foundation. We have a flexible uh, working hours, and because I can see a couple of my colleagues here, and they wake up at midnight. They send us messages midnight and they want an answer there and then. <laughs> so it's my my schedule is flexible, so I'm able to balance between work and family. 